I'll be in touch very soon. There will be time for tears and remembrance, I promise. But now there's important work to be done. What work? I must find and bring to justice the men who killed your mother and my wife. It could literally be any one of us. Ooh. Hi, I'm Dom Griffin. I'm a film critic and you're watching The Armchair Auteur. This is an ongoing video series I do where we talk about new movies, old movies, screenplay analysis, television series reviews, that sort of thing. So if you like movies and you like popular culture and you like to see somebody pick those things apart, please consider subscribing. Today I'm reviewing a film called Georgetown, directed by and starring two-time Academy Award winner Christoph Waltz. The film was shot all the way back in 2017 and then had its debut at the Tribeca Film Festival two years later and now another two years later it is getting its debut in a short limited release and now on video on demand. I quite liked the movie but not for the reasons I expected to going in. All I knew going in was that this movie was called Georgetown and that it was set in Georgetown and that it was based on some kind of true story. And look, I live in Maryland. I've grown up in the DMV, the DC, Maryland, Virginia area my entire adult life. And I know other cities are like this. I know lots of cities are kind of like this, but DC specifically, like parts of it anyway, are so densely populated by this very specific type of really irritating social climber person who only really cares about what you do, where you work, if you know anyone in the hill, like if you're connected to the centralized political power base in the nation's capital, it's really gross. There are lots of cool things about DC. It's a great city for other like native reasons. DC boy. Well, let me check Chocolate City out. Dog chocolate. But the parts of DC that are full of interlopers and transplants and politicos, it's, it's basically like hell. So it is based on a true story, and it did take place in Georgetown, but it's definitely more than just a cinematic screed against a group of people I don't like. The film is a loosely fictionalized take on Franklin Foer's New York Times piece, The Worst Marriage in Georgetown, about the murder of Viola Hermsdrath at the hands of her husband, Albrecht Muth. From a script by proof author David Auburn, Christoph Waltz directs himself as Ulrich Mott, a conniving charlatan who worms his way into the life of rich socialite Elsa Brecht, played by Vanessa Redgrave. Everyone in Elsa's life, save her daughter Amanda, played by Annette Bening, buys into this man's obvious cons, believing him to be this daring diplomat who has helped cool down Middle East conflict through his own nebulous and unorthodox methods. That is, until Elsa turns up dead, and he becomes the obvious number one suspect, and the ensuing trial exposes the many nutty and questionable elements of his personage, specifically the fact that he pretends to be a brigadier general in the Iraq army, among a litany of other obvious lies that nonetheless worked on the many, many marks in this godforsaken town. The United States is in open violation of my rights under the Geneva Convention. I am and remain a serving officer in a foreign army, and as such I'm entitled to my uniform and insignia as well as to be addressed by my full rank, Brigadier General Ulrich Mott. In exploring the nature of the social norms and habits of stuffy fucks and suits, Georgetown scratched a very particular itch for me, and showcased the base rot at the core of so many of its inhabitants. Ulrich is not, as one might imagine, a particularly good or effective con man, but he is in fact just surrounded by a lot of uniquely gullible motherfuckers who are so obsessed with meeting interesting people that they can use in some way that they never doubt the many holes in his stories. Probably because, like Ulrich, they themselves are embodying fraudulent gimmicks so voraciously they believe their own bullshit too. Most movies about con men are fun the way heist movies are fun. It can be entertaining to see the spectacle and art of defrauding others, especially if the marks are the rich elite who we all want to see dressed down in some way or another anyway. But Georgetown, as a movie, doesn't take the time to really relish Ulrich's crimes, instead choosing to show several intimate moments with Elsa that show how she, an otherwise smart and shrewd woman, was emotionally abused and manipulated into falling for his act. All the people around her who like him are largely dolts, but Elsa is just a lonely older woman missing excitement in her life. Even the people who truly love her, like her daughter, can't keep their persistent pity at bay. She is constantly treated like an oversized child. So of course meeting a smart, seeming, younger man who purports to be a fan of her work gets her to let her guard down and to be so totally used. The movie doesn't try to create any suspense out of whether or not Ulrich did it. That's pretty fucking obvious from the start. Instead, it worms around the chronology of his ascent from State Department tour guide to respected socialite through nonlinear methods, hopscotching between his salad days and his thriving charade, conveniently skipping around or artfully dodging the two-year period he spends abroad after a domestic incident between he and Elsa spurs him to flee the country. 
It is in that time period that his chicanery advances from simply lying at dinner parties and designing hollow NGOs to fully-fledged geopolitical tampering and fake spycraft. But at its core, this is a story of exploitation and the tragic weaknesses that make us so exploitable, even by sociopathic buffoons like Ulrich Mott. Benning is spectacular in her diminished role, as she is in literally everything, and Redgrave does truly great work with Elsa, showing her vulnerability but never totally losing her verve, even in the moments that lead to her death. But this is, unsurprisingly, the Christoph Waltz show. Every actor loves to find a character whose quirks and tics so closely mirror the various tricks and motifs of their own personal screen presence, but it's been a minute since I have found an actor in part fit so glove-like. It is obvious why Christoph Waltz wanted to make this movie so badly that he literally ended up directing it himself, because the role gives him ample room to do... Christoph Waltz shit. You know what I'm talking about, just like lots of enunciation, odd phrasing, weird delivery that is somehow both humorous and confusing and, and, and troubling. If you've seen movies of Christoph Waltz, you know what Christoph Waltz shit is. I don't know how to like explain it to you or describe it with words. It's just like, you know what that dude's whole deal is. And he does that here, a lot. You had separate rooms? Yeah. Why is that? She was 91 years old, detective. Have you ever had conjugal relations with a woman in her early 90s? No. Neither have I. My credentials are 100% genuine, despite that moronic courtroom stunt. How could you two amateurs have let that go unchallenged? That alone is grounds for a mistrial. You won't even tell us where you went the night of the 11th. I told you a thousand times I went for a fucking walk. Don't ever speak to me like that. Lie. You lie, you lie, you lie. Every syllable Look, you utter sorry, is a lie. I'm really sorry. If he had told me that his mother was staying here, I would. <laughs> yes! Why don't you knock next time, mother? Go ahead. It's a very strong performance, particularly in the way it presents the whiplash from him being such a charmer to outsiders while being a vindictive monster at home. Now, he did that. Mott did that. How? He still hasn't told me. You can't expect a magician to give away his tricks. Yes. I'm sorry that my clearing up after our party disturbs your rest. Our party, as if anyone could get a word in. It's Amanda, isn't it? She put you in this mood. Why you invite that sour little bitch, I'll never understand. But it's not the most satisfying or impressive flick. Luckily, its runtime is brisk, because the film's central shtick wears thin pretty quickly, culminating in a hard-won moment fully revealing the true depths of Ulrich's deception. Usually these movies make entertainment out of the showmanship of the con, but this one smartly builds to a moment of total and utter exposure, even if it only occurs between two people and costs one of them their lives. I think Georgetown is a good movie to watch if you're looking for something on VOD that's like kind of a you know, low-hanging fruit, nothing that's too crazy, it's not too long, it's entertaining, it's got good acting, it's decent camera work, like, it's a nice little movie. What really took me about it is that this is another movie I've watched in the last month or two that was all shot literal years ago. Like, yeah, there's always independent movies that are shot, you know, and then they get to, like, the festival circuit, and then it takes a little bit of the festival circuit, and then they end up getting released, so there's, like, a little bit of, like, a, a gap between when the movie was made when it comes out, but we're seeing this weird spate of movies that were all made literally three to four years ago, and would have been dumped randomly in the year 2020, and then instead, the people behind them waited until now to drop them, right before like the actual theatrical experience becomes like commonplace again, where people get vaccinated. And my question is, if you're gonna dump these movies anyway, why didn't you just dump them during the pandemic year onto VOD? Like, I don't understand. There was a whole year where there were no major big releases, and most things that came out did have to come out on video on demand or on a streaming platform. So there's all these movies that could have just been released last year. Like, there's no reason this couldn't have come out a year ago. I, I don't understand why it's happening now. And there's probably some kind of intricate financial reason for it, or something to do with people's, like, deals or back-end points or whatever. I don't know. I'm not, like, a money guy. But it does seem a little bit odd to me that there's probably two or three more movies I'm going to watch in the next few months that were all made like at the start of the Trump administration and are now being released at the beginning of the Biden one. But I do think Georgetown's pretty good. It was not quite the acidic teardown of DC culture that I was hoping for. It's It doesn't even feel that DC-like, to be entirely honest, even though DC is sort of like an under-filmed city in terms of cities that have like movies that really capture what they really like. That sucks, whatever. That's, a, that's something for another video, I suppose. But I do think it's worth watching. I think it's pretty good. It's just... It's such a slight little movie that I'm probably not going to think about ever again anytime soon. And it sort of feels like the culmination of Christoph Waltz's entire on-screen persona. Like, I don't know how much more Christoph Waltz stuff he can do beyond this role. It kind of feels almost like a farewell to himself. And maybe he's going to start directing more movies and being behind the camera. Because 
I don't know how much more of him in front of one we can all really take unless he plans to drastically change the way he does his job, which I doubt. But yeah, those are my thoughts about Georgetown. Uh, I think it's cool. You guys should check it out maybe. If you have any thoughts about the movie or if you're questions or anything, anything you want to talk about, do it in the comments below. I love talking to you guys. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you have not subscribed, please subscribe. Hit the little bell notification and get all notifications so you can know when my new videos are dropping because that'd be, that'd be nice. You want, you want to know, right? You want to know. Yeah, I hope everyone's doing well, staying safe, being good to yourselves and each other, wearing your masks, getting vaccinated, getting ready to go back to the movies, and yeah, I'll see you all in the next video.